Ferraro. He's the fourth one. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, so that's, that's what I remember. 
my bad. <laughs>
welcome to the show. This is Craft Heads Brewery, uh, Brewing for Comedy. This is the pro show. Uh, sorry about the late start. We were waiting for some people who bought tickets, but apparently they're still not here. So uh, if they show up late, we're going to tell them to be quiet and also just to go home. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, are you guys ready to start the show? Yeah. All right, guys. This is our second pro show. Our first one we actually sold out as well. Half and uh, this one is actually sold out. Thank you guys very much for coming out. Have a seat, guys. All right, welcome guys in the back. All right, uh, so we have your headliner in the house, Josh Adams. Make some noise for him. Let's give him that great applause. All right, guys, thank you guys for coming. We're going to introduce your host for the evening. Guys, let's have a seat, please. All right, put your hands together for our host and MC tonight, Isaac Mulder. How you guys doing tonight? Come on, you guys pay for this. How you doing tonight? Yeah. Of course you're like, come on. Happy Open Day. Let's go. So who, who's been here before? Hey, who's been here before? Is it okay, so there's a couple of husbands. Hold on a second. Testing, 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 testing. Hello? Okay. So there's just a couple housekeeping rules here. While the comments are up, we just like to keep the noise down, the table talk to a minimum. Minimum back there, guys. Perfect, perfect. We, have, we got guys from Michigan. We got guys that are brand new to comedy and have only done it a couple times. And we got some of the Windsor favorites. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, we have a show here every Tuesday, brought on by Paul Montagnier and Robert Kem Kemeny. Sorry, can't say last name. But they've all honestly cultivated Windsor Commons. They grew this from something where nobody would show up to bringing headliners all the way from Michigan and around America. This is going to go on in Windsor history, and you guys are here to make it. Yeah, yeah. This is going to live on like Windsor's Pizza, the feather hat guy, and the one time that dude trimmed all the bushes into dicks at the river. And you, I'm glad everybody's here, so give yourselves a round of applause. So, uh, anybody got kids out here? You guys are dodging your kids, aren't you? I, I notice every time I uh, take my kids to the park, there's only two type of parents. There's the parents that let their uh, kids go, you know, deal with the playground politics. And then there's the kids that just hover over their children, just trying to keep them safe at every move. And those kids are going to grow up to be a bunch of fucking bitches. <laughs> like, I, I promise you. They would not last on one field trip with Miss Frizzle <laughs> and that bus that can just transition into anything. Like I can't imagine them tricking into some little capsule and getting launched up Ralphie like some type of educational suppository <laughs> over the goddamn common cold like it wasn't even COVID. Now, I honestly feel bad for those kids. Like, can you imagine being in that class, graduating, and then going to a normal fucking class the next year? <laughs> like, you just have a pers- like, your perspective would be skewed like a motherfucker. <laughs> and then you grow up, telling people all this, and they just think you're some type of pathological liar? <laughs> like, I could just imagine, you know, you, you go to a party and Ralphie's there, so you just gotta bust out a little bit of coke for him, you know? Give him a couple of lines, six, seven beers, and I bet you he wouldn't shut the fuck up about that goddamn bus. <laughs> and Miss Frizzle, you know, I feel like she needs to be canceled. She, she put those kids through too much shit. Like, they got PTSD like a motherfucker. <laughs> but yeah, you give him, give him some coke, and oh man, that'd be a great party. I'm sure he'd tell you about it on Tuesday, he was in space, and then on Wednesday, he was seeing the inner workings of an anthill. 
I can't see anybody getting pussy off that though. <laughs> and if you fell for that, well, shame on you. <laughs> so, uh, I recently read this story about the luckiest dude in the world. He's an average white dude, shit job, no women in his life. <laughs> but, but somehow, no matter what, he always kept a positive perspective. So just like, you know, any other day he gets home from work, you know, kicks his boots off. Okay, hold on a second, we gotta fix this. <laughs> this is our second show, guys. Guys, guys. <laughs> Testing. Yeah. He's got it. He doesn't got it. <laughs> Any engineers in here? God damn it. I don't. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Yeah, no matter what it's going to do. Whatever. Try that. <laughs> I don't know if that makes it funnier every time. Maybe just keep it like that. <laughs> We just deal. So he, this guy here, he, he gets home from his job, kicks his boots off, makes dinner, plays some video games, beats his dick and goes to bed. Wakes up in the middle of the night to take a piss to look down and he just got a black dick like... That shit ain't right, it was dead. I, I'm pretty sure it was from the lack of women in his life, you know, his dick probably took one of them cyanide pills, foamed up the mouth and died. Should've just packed his balls up and left, you know? But yeah, his shit was septic, so they had to chop that shit off. <laughs> but, you know, it's 2022, so with the advancement in the medical science, we're able to grow a dick from scratch. <laughs> it's, it's actually pretty cool. You just take a couple cells and you put it on your elbow on some exposed muscle, ti uh, muscle tissue, and that shit will grow like one of them chicha chia pets. <laughs> you might even just have to put a little water, bro. Oh my god. A little bit of water on that shit. <laughs> but yeah, so with the advancements in the medical science, he's able to pick the color, the length, and the girth. <laughs> Personally, I think he fucked up. He went barely above average. With the girth, that wouldn't intimidate this guy. <laughs> and he just went from the paper white to match the rest of his body. If it was me, I would have went black. <laughs> like Batman lurking in the dark black. I'd have probably went about 23 inches long. And probably made the tip look like oh. Thor's hammer and shit. And don't worry, it's not for the ladies. I actually just live in a real bad neighborhood. And I just need to be able to whip my dick around like a fucking nunchuck to keep these tags in the way. But he, he, he made it for about, about six weeks. That dick grew from a little baby dick to something, you know, presentable. They, they attached it. Worked flawlessly. And this is why he's the luckiest dude in the world. Because about two weeks after that, he won the fucking lottery. He went back to those same doctors and said, Can you put a pussy on my forearm? <laughs> Thank you, Aston. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I'm a hopeless romantic. Any other, any other hopeless romantics out here? So, I, I just got the worst taste in women. I always get my heart broken. I, I like them all. I like them tall, I like them short, I like them skinny, I like them thick. I like them bald, crazy, <laughs> bow leg, fuck, even no legs. <laughs> but I always get my heart broken. But I have a Mount Rushmore of, of the four worst. Okay. The first one, her name was Bethany. We met online. Her profile said that she was, in, she was into crystals and candles. She was a spiritually grounded woman ready to find love. And let me tell you, she had me at candles. <laughs> so, so we talked for a bit. You know, I'm like, yeah, she's the one. She invites me over. As soon as I get to her house, I look around and there's not a fucking candle in sight. Everybody online is a fucking liar. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, let me see your crystal collection. She shows me her topaz, her amethyst. 
but her favorite was crystal fucking meth. <laughs> I, I should have seen it coming with a trailer park name like Bethany. <laughs> now I don't answer her because it's saved under Methany. Uh, the second one, I'm not even going to tell you her name because I'm sure you know her. She was an aggressive nympho. She wanted sex six, seven, eight times in a day. And sometimes I just couldn't keep up. You know, when I couldn't perform, I just look at my dick like we're two runaway slaves saying, Oh, if we don't hurry up, Matt's is gonna be real mad. <laughs> and you know, I still couldn't perform, so I had to take my ass to the goddamn sex store and buy the most expensive sex toy on the market. The Liberator 9000. <laughs> and I thought it was for her. That night, we get home, she throws a pack of wet wipes at me, told me to get my whistle clean. Somebody wanted to blow on it. You know what that means. I feel sorry for you, brother. So that night, that liberator turned on me. And let me tell you, I hobbled right out of that relationship. The third one, she was a rebound. An English girl. Never had that before. So I told her my, my last girlfriend was a Hispanic. And uh, she liked to call me Poppy. I don't know about you guys, but have you had a girl call you daddy? I know you have. That shit will do something to you. But when a girl calls you Poppy? Poppy? That shit will make your heart, your, oh my god, your dick harder than Chinese arithmetic. But I'm telling you, she, 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 you know, she's a people pleaser, so she tried to pull that out of the bedroom, and it just didn't work. You know, all the Spanish come, oh, puppy, puppy. Yeah, no, she's English. Oh, puppy, puppy, oh, puppy, you know. I never finished, so that relationship I had to finish. But the last one, oh, man, she was the one that got away. She was a beautiful white girl named Alexis. She had cornrows and about five kids. And she, she had a beautiful accent. It really came out when she would yell at her kids. I can't get your bumba glass back to bed! <laughs> I don't know if it was it, the, the, her yelling at her kids that turned me on or the accent. But one day, I get home from work, and she just broke my heart. I thought she was upstairs watching Cool Runnings without me. I get up, I get up there, and she's entertaining four Jamaican gentlemen. And they were using her like a bobsled. But I wasn't even mad, because I love that movie. I couldn't help but cheer, feel the rhythm, feel the rhythm. How did all four of you fit in there at the exact same time? Okay, guys. So our, our first comic of the night comes all the way from Michigan. Yeah, come on. All the way from, from Michigan. Oh, yeah. Give, give a, a very friendly Canadian welcome to AJ. notice it's getting a little chilly outside so this is like my favorite time of the year because my waistline goes from numbers back to letters again <laughs> that was getting depressing for a bit so I call it my waistline savings time <laughs> I grew up as a medium but I finally graduated into the largest where the largest at huh? yeah, I, I love that um, that life is about balance huh you gotta have yin to the yang Okay, I know I uh, grew up as a stair-step kid. I had an older brother who's older by a year, a little sister who's younger by a year. They each got new clothes. I got hand-me-downs. But I, I was smart. I noticed that my brother started to gain weight around the age of eight. So I said, if I eat my vegetables and I exercise really hard, I'll stay skinny. And they have no choice but to give me new clothes. Yeah. And it worked. He went up into the large as I stayed in the small. And for years, it was just me, myself, and I. But misery loves company. Like I said, life's about balance. So I tried my hardest, because my sister got all these dresses and frilly stuff. I tried my hardest to get her turned into a tomboy so I can hand me down something to her. Because it's not going to just be me as the only one in the family that gets hand me downs. I mean, come on, is that, is that fair? Did you guys have the uh, Brady Bunch growing up? 
<laughs> I love watching the Brady Bunch because representation matters. I love watching them on TV. It was a story of a lovely lady who was bringing up three very lovely girls. All of them had hair of gold, like their mother, the youngest one in curls. And then there's a story of a man named Brady who was bringing up three young boys of his own. They were living together as a family, but they were all alone. Till this one day, this lady met this fellow, and they knew that it was just more than a hunch. They knew that they had to become the Brady Bunch. So I had, my dad had an older sister, I had my older sister, sorry, and my mom had my older brother. Then they had, got together and had the three of us. And <clears throat> being a stair step kid, I got to see my life flash before my eyes. You know, you start as baby steps, you crawl. Me and my brother were both crawling. And then he starts walking, and I'm still crawling. And then he starts talking, and I'm still goo goo gaga. Goo goo gaga is not good for my brother. And then he starts learning how to read. And my dad was a Sunday school teacher, so he would have him reading Bible scriptures to the classmates at church. And I was like, that's not how I want to start. So I withheld my reading. <laughs> I delayed it by a year. <laughs> Me and my sister learned how to read at the same time. <laughs> it's it's, it's kind of hard when you're growing up and like your first words are like beseech and therefore. And everybody else is learning, yo mama's so fat. <laughs> it kind of changes the landscape of your jokes. And I'm like, thou mother's figure. Is so that when she jumps into the air, she's got stuff. It just doesn't have the same ring to it. So you had to have backup growing up. So my brother being a year older than me, we got into a lot of fights at school. And it was okay because, you know, he was big. I was like, yeah, like I said. And so I would say, hey, I'm going to get my brother. But he had nobody to get. <laughs> He's not going to get me. Man, the one's picking on me. <laughs> Life is about balance. It's about beginning and ending. And um, I must say, I loved um, growing up with him because on the initial side, you see the beginning. And now that we're older, you start to see the other side of growing up. He lost his hair last year. <laughs> Look at this. I'm still hanging on by a thread. I wasted one of my haircuts to come here. I wanted to uh, look fresh for you guys. So now I'm down from 17 to 16. <laughs> and my name is AJ, that's my time. Give it up for AJ. Okay, so the next guy is one of Windsor's comics that are He's one of the best. I love this guy. He's uh, open for uh, some of the trailer park boys. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, oh shit. Oh, he, I guess he opened up for the African Prince of Comedy? How do you know do that again? <laughs> Give it up for Billy Squires. Sandwich. <laughs> 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 
lay down on their luck tonight if you wanted to learn, like, <laughs> they got the ingredients at home. We all have the ingredients at home. <laughs> Man, have you ever had one? No? Yeah, white privilege keeps you from that. <laughs> Take a slice of bread, right? You fall and you're with me. Step two, we're gonna. Who Fuck yeah, we're gonna put hot sauce on And then finally, to top it all off. The other slice of bread. Wrong. You fold it in half. What's wrong with you? You need a hot sauce For real, that's not a one time thing. You don't go from a hot sauce sandwich to filet mignon and everything. <laughs> you just wash it down with some pickle juice. Yeah. 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 That's all good. I love hot sauce. This is great. This is great. This all takes me back to high school because I went to an all white high school. There's like, there's like four black guys. I think we have enough to cover that. <laughs> I think we could totally reenact. <laughs> like, I don't watch you. I don't have bad memories of it. Like, it's weird going to a school where it looks like they're just getting out of racial segregation. <laughs> and then watching movies on racial segregation. Do you guys remember the Titans? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Did you laugh too hard? <laughs> now, there's this one scene in particular in a all white class just uh, where the, the white head coach gets replaced by the black head coach as head coach, right? And then all the, one of the white players, or all the white players get mad. And then the one yells out, <laughs> his name's Coach Boone, the black guy's name is Coach Boone. And the one white guy yells out, I don't want to play football for no Coach Coon. Oh, wow. I know, I know. And everyone in my class turned and looked at me. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck you want me to do? Get up and the TV? <laughs> <laughs> it's the weirdest thing ever. It looked like a bunch of snow owls turned their heads. Just... <laughs> it was it got worse than that, man. You guys heard the book To Kill a Mockingbird? Oh, no. Ooh, Mockingbird died in that room. Uh, <laughs> man, it was it was so bad. Like the book contains the N-word, right? It says nigger in it with a heart. E R for that motherfucker. <laughs> And my teacher thought it was a smart idea for us to read it out loud. Oh. As a class. Like, you gotta go up to the podium like you're giving a presidential speech. <laughs> 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 the worst part about it though is she picked the wrong dude to read. She picked the wrong dude, she picked Stuart. <laughs> and I was Stuart. Stuart, just a stutter. Oh. Yeah, you guys ever hear Porky Pig say the N-word? Very rough. Basketball was rough too. Because <laughs> uh, my dad would come and watch the games, right? And nobody had any idea if he was my dad. But they would just he would just like from the stands, like call out my nickname too. I'm like, well, you gotta leave that shit at home. But, <laughs> like, I'm at the free throw line, too. It's quiet as fuck in there. He's like, that's right, Luma, just like in the backyard. <laughs> I was like, yo, these people don't know our relationship, man. You guys think you're so creep watching me play ball in my backyard. Like, <laughs> but the worst part was, after the game, when we were shaking hands, everyone was calling me Luma. Like, good job, Luma, good job. Like, that's not my fucking name. <laughs> I'm not out here on the free throw line clicking or anything like that. <laughs> I, <laughs> uh, I broke up with my girl recently. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> the worst part is. <laughs> no, the, uh, the worst part is when they want to stay friends. Like, she asked if we could be friends, you know, and like that fucked me up. Cause in my mind we were like, I don't know, Simba and Nala. Yeah. Now she wants to be Timon and Pumbaa. <laughs> <laughs> Man, he didn't laugh at that. <laughs> 
President of the United States or Prime Minister, like when I'm behind the wheel, that's when I'm like, all right, I'm on the spot, you know? Because like, there's nothing better than when I'm driving around in my car and I pull up to a stop sign where there's people waiting across and I wave them through. <laughs> <laughs> like that is when I feel powerful. <laughs> you guys don't even get it. Like, I drove, like today was my day off. I drove around all day, grand pedestrian safety. <laughs> Like, I was listening to Kanye while I was doing it. No one man should have all that power. Proceed, mortal. Uh, I'm also a rapper. Oh. I know. You didn't oh. know. Surprise. My rap name is Big Sperm. <laughs> that's right, that's right, man, because we here, we out here, we ain't no tissue, no sock, or someone's like you right here. I got a mixtape, you check it out on uh, iTunes, it's the come up. <laughs> like, like that, man, it was hot as hell when I released it. <laughs> you guys are laughing, I'm fucking serious. Watch out for the second come <laughs> Christ on the front. <laughs> 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 yeah, Crossing myself. Uh, She's another cross. Nah, man. Let's not go there. Well, <laughs> Say Jesus on the cross. Ain't no way Jesus on the cross. It's a weird uh, aphrodisiac for you, I guess. These <laughs> <laughs> crossing swords make me like a. I don't know how to do Moving on. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, we're moving on on that. No, I, I had to leave the rap game, though. I had to leave the rap game, because my haters were jealous, you know what I mean? Big Sperm was everywhere. It was in magazines. <laughs> you know, I was just busted onto the scene like that. And my haters were so salty, bro. I was so salty. But I, I told them one day they're going to have to keep their mouth shut. <laughs> but, like, the rap game's too dangerous. That's why I had to step aside for a bit, you know? So you never know when you're in concert, someone wants to work with the nerve and try to shoot sperm on stage. Like some jerk off. Some duck off. I don't know. It's crazy. You imagine what the reporter would be like? Oh, this is it. Big sperm was shot multiple times on. Oh my god, it'd be amazing. You got a big movie going audience? You guys like movies? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Do you guys like movies? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All right. That's what I like to hear. I hate movies. Fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I hate scary movies. I hate scary movies. I hate scary movies. Why? Oh, well, because I, I would never be able to play the part. As I like, lead oh. in that movie. And I'm not saying because I would die first. Like, this is what I'm We're beyond that. I knew you guys were going. I knew you guys were going. But we are beyond that. No, my, my diet would get me killed in a scary movie. You know what I'm saying? This is, hear me out. There's always that scene in the movie where the guy's running away from, like, the killer, right? 
And like he's running, he's running, runs downstairs, hides into a closet, and then he just like can hold his breath like an Olympian. Just <laughs> <laughs> like after all that, like first of all, I'd be out of breath. <laughs> Holy fuck! <laughs> that nigga's gonna get me. Yeah, that nigga's gonna get me. Look at my Kaepernick. Just <laughs> Killer would be walking around, just like listening for me. All he would hear is like the Taco Bell ate early, like. <laughs> for real, that shit would give me away so quick. Like, damn, he probably like stabbed me through the door, and I, 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 I'm like happy about it because like that, I finally have to relieve my pressure. <laughs> I die from the stab wound, he dies from the smell, like, you know, all the credits, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, we went far there, that was it. Yeah, thank you, I appreciate it. No. You guys have a radical idea? Who, who's here, who here is a fighter? Who here is a fighter? Like, I'm not a, okay, this is good. <laughs> okay. okay, so here's my idea. I think every, every person that gets caught in a bar fight should be brought to court to fight against other people caught in bar fights. <laughs> yes, you know, in like a Mortal Kombat style yes. competition. Where like, if, the, if you win, you go to the UFC, and then if you lose, you get recruited to our armed forces. Yeah. You know what I'm like, why, why should we let that talent go to waste? I've been watching a lot of Tony Robbins. They say, do what you're fucking good at. Let's help them help us. All they do is hurt us. Help them help us. Jesus. It'd be like a fucking, when LeBron went to Miami. And I'd be like, yeah, I uh, uh, just got out of court. I plan on taking my skills to South Beach, aka Ukraine. <laughs> Do something like that. Or could you imagine like the dude all drunk and shit in the octagon fighting in his like street clothes that he like ended up in jail with? Joe <laughs> <And> Joe Rogan. <laughs> Joe Rogan like, oh yeah, we're in for a good one today. He's already sweating and his face is beat red and the fight hasn't even started yet. <laughs> Woo, this guy's a real hothead. <laughs> like, yeah, look at him staring. You can tell he's had a few, Joe. We're in for a good one. <laughs> Man. I remember one time uh, I said that joke and there was a fighter in the crowd. <laughs> It wasn't good. He like got offended and shit. He's like, I don't want to go to war. I'm like, I'm not saying you have to. That's a good idea. But it was weird. He wanted to fight me after the show too. I know, I know. And like he gave me like a disclaimer before the fight. He's like, Oh, you pissed the wrong dude off today, because I'm a 12th degree black belt. I know. I know. I didn't want him to know I was like a little rattled by that, so I just threw it right back at him. I was like, oh hell no, you're the one that fucked up. Because I'm a first degree murderer. <laughs> <laughs> Give it up for Billy fucking yeah. Smart. Okay, so our next comic, he's, he's new to this, but it, at Crackheads, we feel that everybody deserves a chance. So please give him a warm welcome like he just dropped his first special for Petty P. How's everybody doing tonight? Yes, yes, yes. keep that energy. Thank you, thank you. Uh, let's give it up for Ivan. You're doing a great job. Hope you're doing it. Okay, hey, hey. Right. I hope you guys didn't think a show with mostly black comedians was going to start on time because not the case. They could have told us that there was like free weed and chicken in the back before the show or something. We would have been there like two hours ago just waiting, like waiting. Ready, on time, you know? This is the uh, section of the show where there will be a lot of weed and penis jokes. So, ladies, if you do like weed and penis jokes, 
feel free to approach me after the show. I've got an abundance of jokes, weed, penis for all of you ladies. It's an abundance. I'm just so grateful to be here. I just, like everybody else, you know, I'm just trying to get my 10,000 hours in and, you know, just, just do this, you know, not, not smoke, well, smoking weed, yes, but one of the things I've done for 10,000 hours in my life, definitely smoke weed, right? This shit doesn't happen by itself. You gotta make, you gotta smoke a lot of weed to make these decisions, right? Second thing that I've done for 10,000 hours in my life, Masturbate. The only other thing. It's a little bit hard to make income off that though, right? Like what am I gonna do? Open a masturbation factory or like some franchises in a couple different cities? Like it's not, the income's not there, so comedy is what I really want. Comedy is what I want. That and some pussy. My wrist is getting fucking tired. It's, it's been a while, it's been a while. I've tried dating apps. I'm not really a fan of dating apps. I think they're just too deceiving. I don't really wanna be talking to you for, sorry. I don't care about looks, I don't care about personality, style, all that. I care about smell. Like, I want to be talking to you for three weeks, we finally meet in front of this fancy restaurant. I go for that first hug, that first embrace, and... <laughs> onions. I, I personally hate onions, so at that point, it's pretty much over for me. If you smell like onions before dinner, like, it's a deal breaker for me. The whole time now, I'm in this date trying to find a way out. When I find that way out, I'm leaving faster than OJ when he got his verdict. <laughs> Judge is like, OJ Simpson, you are not guilty. And OJ said, peace. <laughs> <laughs> Forgot my gloves. <laughs> my biggest worry on this date is that I just had to use two premium two can dine coupons. You know what I mean? Like, if Apple doesn't make those books as good as they used to, you gotta be selective, you know what I mean? So again, if I find a way out, I'm leaving faster than somebody on the Mari show is not. Okay? In the case of this date, she is smelly. I'm running around in there, cameras following me and shit. You know, it's the end of that date. Despite all my jerking off, I have become a father recently. <laughs> How old is he last? He's 48 and a half months years old. 48 and a half months years old. I don't even know how old he is in real life, to be quite honest. But he's growing, you know? It's the only thing. It's the only thing I got accomplished, I've done well in the last couple of years. All my friends, including having kids, they you know, travel, they bought property, started businesses, gone to school, etc. Only thing I've learned recently is how to gain weight. Like just a funny thing. For reference, sorry, for reference, I used to be crackhead on a let skinny. So, it's a little bit of a difference for me, you know? It's a, it's a little bit of a change. Me and my friends, we all try to go out, we try to get together as much as we can, and you know, like the old days, and we all have kids, we have responsibilities, and real reason we don't go out is me. It's because I'm lazy as fuck. <laughs> I like to stay home and watch sports all day. Then I like to watch reruns of the sports that I just watched all day. <laughs> then I like to watch old guys debate about the sports that I have to watch all day. After that, I like to read the articles that the old guys wrote <laughs> about the sports that I watched all day. And at the end of the night, <laughs> a lot of sports fans here. Thank you, this works. This works. Uh, at the end of the night, I always save a little bit of time because I want to work on my craft. I want to be the best. I want to, you know, be successful, be successful, work hard. I always save a little bit of time at the end of the night so I can get a little bit of practice so one day I can finally open that masturbation factory one day. <laughs> my name is Penny P. I hope I've been paying enough for you. Thank you for supporting local comedy. Thank you so much. God damn it, Penny P. That's pretty good for his first time, huh? So the next comic, it's not his first time. He's been around a couple times. Nicest guy I've ever met, truthfully. Eric White, guys. Bisexual. 
when I'm hitting on men. <laughs> like, like, this guy thought I was like some kind of secret gay superhero, you know? Like, oh, he can sleep with two dudes in a single night. Uh, he can clear tall cocks with a single hop, you know? <laughs> uh, guys, uh, you know, uh, another thing I've realized recently, uh, I think I've figured out a way uh, to figure out if somebody's a crazy person. Uh, does anybody... That, that right there, laughing at not a joke, that's a crazy person. Nice. Um, uh, anyone else? Anyone else have a way that like, you can tell right away someone's a crazy person? You, sir. No clue? Okay, I got one for you. Uh, it, uh, it's exactly to do with how many blankets are in their windows. Did you get me? So, like, if you're walking by a house and you just see somebody with, like, that one like mandala blanket in the window, you're like, good for that liberal arts major. She's getting back to three, man. Uh, then you see that like second one in the window, and you're like, oh man, that lady definitely calls her cats fur kids. <laughs> and then you, you keep walking, and you see that one Winnie the Pooh blanket just limply hanging in the bathroom window, and you're like, and it's a meth lab, okay. <laughs> Guys, uh, I wanted to say I've had some, I had some health problems, not recently, but it was in high school. Um, and there's no easy way to say this, it, it was hemorrhoids. Uh, yeah, I know, the internet likes to call them asteroids, you know, it's a whole thing. Um, but, you know, uh, when I had those, I had to go to a lot of doctor visits for those things. Uh, and I went to one, usually they were great, but this one wasn't, because uh, they didn't get me, like, a consultation with a doctor. They got me a Zoom call with a nurse practitioner. <laughs> Which, like, nurses are great, but, like, if I need to get my car fixed, I'm not going to the high school auto shop, let's be honest. I, I need a professional. So I'm there talking to her, and we're having this conversation, and she's on the Zoom call on the laptop, and I'm like, and there's this, an honest moment where I go, am I going to have to kind of just shuffle my pants down and kind of just back my ass up to the webcam? <laughs> So she, so she can, you know, check out the affected area. And, and I was like, oh my god. And even worse, my dad was in the room. <laughs> so he didn't want that either. Uh, like, honestly, the only thing I could think of that's worse than this, yeah, no, I'm sorry guys, but... Uh, is if, if you're down there, and like, you look back, and you see those, like, uh, on the screen, you see that little, like, orange and black logo? Fellas, might, might get what I'm saying? Casting coach, you know. Um, uh, only thing, or, like, worse than that, you kind of, like, just bend over, you look back, and you just see all those Facebook Live hearts flying by. <laughs> Maybe you guys could guess by now, but I'm unemployed. Um, <laughs> Uh, but I did have a job once, it was at Fort Malden uh, in Amherstburg, so you know, uh, historic fort, all that. Um, and one day my boss tells me he needs me to work the Windsor Pride Parade. And he says, but one catch, you gotta wear your uniform. Now, uh, <laughs> has anybody, uh, like, anybody been to Fort Malden, anybody know the uniform there? Uh, yeah, so like, maybe you think like, oh, uh, dress shirt and slacks. Nope. 17th century British red coat. <laughs> uh, anyone been to the Windsor Pride Parade? Uh, anybody here? Uh, well, if you have, uh, how many people there did you see ready to fight Napoleon? <laughs> uh, I, I remember walking by a lady uh, there with my coworker. We're both walking by, and she saw us, and I remember her saying quietly to herself, she goes, Man. They're in some kinky shit. <laughs> While I was there, I also went to a drag show. 
Um, I was there, and you know, six foot a dude with another foot a hat on top of that. There's no way they're leaving it alone. Um, I, I've got drag. I've got drag queens walking up to me, like, "Ooh, I like me this nutcracker right here." You know? oh, <laughs> let, let me put it this way to you guys. By the end of that performance, uh, my army whites were about 80% glitter. <laughs> All right, guys, here's Isaac Mulder. I think that's not the first time you come to the hand thing where I have a black guy. <laughs> Eric White, guys. You guys having a good time? Yeah! Yeah, I'm glad to hear it. Our next comic, he's been on uh, CBC Radio. He was in the Border, Simmons, oh my God. Border City Comedy Festival. Give it up for CJ. Okay, so, anyways, moving on from the gay thing that just happened there. Um, so, I got fat. That's been fun. Getting fat's fun. Yeah. Right? Anybody else get fat? Yeah. Sure. Okay. Uh, getting fat's fun. Losing weight's not as fun. Right? I've been trying the dieting thing. Right? I tried fasting. Anybody ever tried fasting? Yeah? Do you know what fasting is? Do you know fasting is? Well, fasting, for you, if you don't know, fasting is when you have to eat your food, like, really fast. <laughs> So your wife doesn't know you're not actually dying. That's how fast it is. Try to exercise. Exercise, not, not very fun. Um, mostly, like, I only like exercise with music. Anybody else only like exercise when there's music playing? You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Mine's not motivational. I just want to block up the sounds of my tits bouncing up and down. <laughs> you know? People in other rooms think I'm like applauding myself. Like, oh, you go. Know, that's Shakira's song. I don't know. Get you moving. Sorry about that. No, and that's the problem with going to church too. I stopped going to church recently, uh, and it's not a religious reason. I just don't think Jesus tastes very good. <laughs> I'm not saying we should like, like I don't want to be disrespectful. We want to change the flavor. I'm not saying we should make like a Dorito Jesus. <laughs> I'm just saying that we found something good to like dip them in. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> we like dip the Jesus. <laughs> And you can like choose your, you choose like the sprinkly one, you go up and pick it, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then don't let the old guy touch it, just you just do it yourself, you know? Yeah, it would work, because then you got like the body of Christ, the blood of Christ, and the creamy goodness of Christ. Oh. 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 You don't let Jesus magic in the temple. So I got three kids, anybody have kids? Woo! I'm so sorry. <laughs> I got a three-year-old, four-year-old, a five-year-old, so, yeah. Sorry. She, 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 that looked painful her to her, just hear that. That's so bad. Yeah. A um, couple of things, okay. When you have kids, I'll give you a couple of things, a couple pieces of advice. Don't take them shopping with you. Don't do that. Okay? It's the worst experience if you take your kids shopping with you, because they're screaming the whole time. And like, as a parent, you're like, this screaming sounds like vicious, like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, people hearing, like, you're thinking like, I hope nobody thinks I'm like, beating my children. <laughs> but what you don't know as a parent is that everybody walking by your kids like, I hope someone beats those fucking children. <laughs> I don't know, I'm not perfect yet as a dad, you know what I mean, you gotta work your way up. Like the other day my kids, they were fighting with sticks outside, and so I was like, stop fucking hitting each other with sticks. And my wife came out, she's like, you can't do that. I was like, what, what? She's like, you can't swear at the kids, especially outside. I said, why? 
She goes, because somebody's gonna hear that and call child services. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck are they gonna do? She's like, they're gonna take the kids. I was like, all of them? <laughs> Right now. <laughs> 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 she called parent services. What are you calling child services? <laughs> 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 you need a favor. <laughs> Another thing you can't do if you have kids, don't ever play dead in front of your kids, right? That's a fucking that's a that's a terrible mistake. Okay? Then I was playing dead, I was like, oh daddy's dead. They're like, oh, quick! You grab his legs, I'm gonna punch him in the stomach till blood comes out. <laughs> You step on his face. I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> that terrible first responder instinct. That <laughs> Imagine if I actually died in my fucking house. I met the news story the next day. Like, local father found dead with six crayons shoved up his ass. <laughs> <laughs> with little bruised footprints on his spine. I don't know what the fuck. He choked, so that was fucking weird, right? <laughs> yeah. So. Another thing you shouldn't do, you know, kids, don't bring him to parks when there's other kids there. Okay? Because kids, here's the thing you don't know about kids. Kids are kind of like farts, right? What? Okay. <laughs> you don't mind your own, right? And sometimes they even kind of impress you. <laughs> but other people's are fucking disgusting. <laughs> Don't come out and be like, oh my god, mine's kind of like yours, isn't that funny? Like, no, it's not funny, I want to fucking throw up. <laughs> I don't know how yours is wet, I don't know how I can tell it's wet. <laughs> you don't look Mexican, but I feel a Mexican thing coming out of that. You know what, too, the little kids, too? Uh, this is crazy. The other day I read an article that someone in Ontario, I think it was London or something like that, some doctor, he misdiagnosed like dozens of children with autism or Down syndrome. Like he was wrong completely. And he told the parents, like, yeah, they have Down syndrome. And everyone's like, that is so fucking, how could he fuck that up? Like, how could you make that mistake? Let me tell you something. I got three kids. I've seen so many children, every single kid. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Maybe, maybe. I, 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 okay. Look what it's doing. The other day, my son. My, the other day, my son had sit, he was just cutting everything and half in the kitchen. Like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> You're playing. Is it cake with everything we have? Like, it's not cake. Like, stop cutting things. <laughs> Another thing, okay, this is the thing, I got a five-year-old boy, okay? When you have a five-year-old boy, you have to start watching these five-year-old boy things. He wants you to watch them with him, right? Mm -hmm. He likes watching these superhero movies, okay? Like Batman, Spider-Man, all that shit. And uh, he's a big fan. I'm not as big a fan, because I don't like the message they're sending him. You know what I'm saying? Like, for him, he's watching it, and he's absorbing that um, you somehow soon, like, get superpowers, like, soon after your dad dies. <laughs> <laughs> Like Spider-Man, Superman, Batman, all these guys have dead dads, and he's putting this together, and he's watching me get fatter, like, way too excited. <laughs> he, he's watching me get fatter the way, like, I watch, like, a popcorn bag in the microwave. <laughs> like, it's coming soon, I know that. <laughs> so much buttery goodness, this is going to be great. And then he was watching me climb the stairs, and he saw, like, sweat coming down, and I just heard him whispering, singing to himself. He's like, I just can't wait to be king. <laughs> <laughs> we took the kids, uh, probably like three weeks ago now, took them to the amusement park to uh, Candace Wonderland. Oh. Candace Wonderland? Yeah. yeah. And uh, we were walking around, and there was Snoopy walking around, and my daughter, she's four, she was like, uh, Dad, Snoopy won't say hi to me. And I was like, yeah, pro I, like, I wouldn't say hi to you either. Like, <laughs> I wouldn't say about you, and I'm forced to talk to you. Like, he's a grown man. He doesn't want to talk to me. Like, you know, him. The things you're going to tell him. His life is already falling pretty snoopy. I fucking can't. Do you want to give him some fucking advice now? Like, 
Anyways, so she's complaining about it, and she's like, he won't look at me, he won't look at me. So she's like, Dad, you should go punch Snoopy. I'm like, I'm not gonna punch Snoopy, okay? What are you talking about? And so my wife goes, she goes, Baby, Daddy can't punch Snoopy because if Daddy punches Snoopy, he's gonna get taken away and he'll have to leave and he can't go any any of the rides anymore. And I was like, where is that fucking dog? Right now. Punch him right in the fucking face. I'll punch any dog. I don't give a shit. Whether that be a seeing eye dog, I'll fucking punch him. Right because fuck him. Why did he bring a blind guy to the amusement park? That guy's probably so confused. He's like, why am I spinning? Why am I stuck out this fucking off? So he deserves it. I'll fucking... I don't yeah, I'll relax. I don't have to hear this bullshit all day. So that's good. Fuck Snoopy. Sure, okay. Fuck Snoopy. Yeah. So I got a house. Um, we got our own place. The thing about having your own place is that you start accumulating nice shit, and you get nervous people are gonna come steal your shit, you know? So we don't have enough money for like an alarm system, you know what I mean? So instead what I did, I just took pictures of our family, and I photoshopped all the arms off of us and put them up in the house. That way, the burglars when they come in, they'll just feel guilty, and they don't want to take your shit. <laughs> You know what I mean? Then one of them be like, I don't know, like, let's take all the shit. And I was like, I don't want. Somebody took their fucking arms. Like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> like, shut up. Just like, grab the PlayStation. Like, I don't even know how they fucking play it. Like, what are they doing? <laughs> are they like, Dance Dance Revolution? Like, what are they doing on this thing? <laughs> they can just like take all our silver oil and watch them pick it up with our feet the next day. Like, <laughs> fun tree. So, uh, I'm kind of dumb, I realize that. Uh, you ever be like 30, and then you get high when you're 30? You ever do that? Yeah. The other day I got high, and I was, I got lost in Tecumseh Mall Park. <laughs> I, like, I don't know where the fuck I am right now. Why is there six roads called fucking Lozon? <laughs> There's like Lozon Road, Lozon Parkway, Lozon. I'm like, where the fuck am I? Lozon? Is that what's happening right now? <laughs> then I get so high that I realize that I'm fucking Lozon. <laughs> I don't need to get home. This is, this is who I am. I'm here. I should just get a tent and live here. <laughs> All right, you guys have a great night. CJ Bernhauer, guys. God damn. Okay, you guys ready? Everybody got your drinks? Everybody got your pizza? God damn. Okay, so now is what you've all been waiting for. No? No one's waiting for this? Yeah, okay. So this next comment, he's been on Fox Last. BT Apollo, and if you guys are football fans, he was on Hard Knocks, roasting all the Detroit Lions. Now can we give him just the craziest Canadian welcome for Josh Adams.
Yeah. No, I was finna say, man, give it up for the moment that that shit was good. I had some apple cider shit. I broke my uh, little sober October for y'all. I had a little, I had a little L. It really wasn't hard shit. It was just a little shit to give me a little buzz going. What's up, drug dealers in the corner? Y'all like? <laughs> This nigga, got on, this nigga got on flip flops. What's up, bro? This nigga got this set of drugs. What you need? Blah, 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 Hell yeah, this is a cool little top step. Y'all got me doing this on, too. I like this shit. This ain't really a stage, because this is like the top step. Anybody can do this. Canada, man, they let us in this bitch. They weren't gonna do it at first. I had to ask. I ain't, uh... Vaccinated. I didn't know. We free to come over to this bitch. Now I'm glad to be back in Canada. I ain't never going back. Fuck America. You heard him? Come on now, you hear him? Start the war. That's crazy, man. Y'all dress like people from Canada. This is how we think y'all dress all the time. Like, them kind, them kind of shirts, drinking maple syrup. That's how we stereotype, That's how we stereotype y'all, man. I was like, them niggas from Canada. Why y'all got the mask on, man? Shit real now. What y'all trying to be? Catch the shit like everybody else, man. Take that off. What y'all trying to be? I am legend? Man, take that shit off. Man, if you want to be Will Smith, take that shit off. Man. Fuck it, man. Welcome to Canada. Welcome to Canada, goddammit. Dan Campbell! <laughs> this is cool shit, hey, man. I want to hear your impersonation of him. I've never done one. That's the thing about it. Oh, here go my impersonation of Dan Campbell. You got one. I'm about to do it right now. You ready? Yeah, let's go. You ready? This is my impersonation of Dan Campbell. It's my first time ever doing it. Okay, you ready? Uh, yeah. Here we go. How you doing? I'm Dan Campbell. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. I don't, I don't know how to... That nigga, first of all, first of all, first of all, he not famous enough to do an impression. <laughs> do y'all even know who that is? No. Exactly. So to them, they think I got this shit nailed. You know what I'm saying? They, they're like, I don't know. That last motherfucker did a cold ass Dan Campbell, bro. I don't know. You know what I'm You knocked that bitch out the park. And I know you ain't drunk off beer. What you over here drunk off of? That ain't no beer drunk. What you drunk off of? Hey, craft beer. Craft beer? All right, get that motherfucker some craft water. Don't get that shit out. He, he drunk as hell. I'm not trying to see no white uh, bar fight in here tonight. I don't want no parts of that. Me and the black guy I came with, leaving. We get the fuck out of here. I don't want to see nobody take no bar and go whoosh. right here and fuck y'all up. Those are ninjas or nail techs. It's something that they can pull out nut chucks or a nail file. You know? It's a cool ass karaoke night though, I ain't gonna lie to what else would you say, bro? I put you off script. No, you didn't. I can do this on script, off script. It don't matter. Your friend's leaving you. <laughs> you can take your prescription tonight. Hey, if your people though? My friends right here. Yeah, they don't claim you no more. <laughs> They're like, you embarrassed us, eh? Yeah. Uh, okay. That's my only impression. <laughs> The weather changed. We just we had good weather today. Weather was nice. You know when it comes though. I hate weather, like in the area we live in. Like just this area we live in, you don't know what clothes to bring out the basement. Everybody just walk around smelling like mothballs. You, know? <laughs> you don't know what you're gonna have. You come outside, you have four seasons. And one day it's hot, cold, raining, snowing, the leaves fall out the trees, 30 minutes later them bitches grow back on the tree. <laughs> it's an earthquake, a tornado, a volcano on the road. I'm like, hey, when we move to Jumanji, when did that happen? Well, get the dice. Let's finish the game before Dan Campbell get down. Let's just get the dice. It's weird, like, yeah, I'm telling you, like, this is the only place you can be shoveling your snow and get stung by a bee. This is the only place. You out there clearing your driveway, you get chased by a bee with a
a scarf on. You don't know. Why <laughs> well, kill this bitch and put it on my Snapchat? All right. You okay, it's really weird out here, man. I'm grown now, man. I'm to the age now where I'm ready to let a woman eat my ass. <laughs> I'm ready, but I just don't. I mean, this is the thing, though, man. I just ain't found. I'm willing to try it. They just gotta find some manly ways for you to get your ass ate for me to participate. Because I ain't just gonna bend over and let you eat my ass. I, I got kids to raise after this. You know what I'm saying? I gotta, I gotta be a man. I can't pick my daughter over from daycare and I'd have been like this the whole time. Eat my ass. I'm gonna come get her, shoot my you bitch ass nigga. I don't know why. With you. And then you ain't finna push my legs back and eat my pussy either. Like that's just like something that happened, man. Oh, got to be some ways. It got to be I got to be like a Heisman trophy or something. Like I'm just saying, how damn Campbell gonna look at me as a man if I go out here with my ass? I'ma say his name about six more times. Every time I say his name, y'all drink. Y'all ain't drinking, y'all just in here? Cheers! Oh, uh, y'all drink? Ain't no security in here or nothing like that. These just in here looking. They look very nefarious over here. Uh, I don't drink, I just robbed niggas from out of town, bro. I know you ain't got no guns, that's why I'm over here, bro. Y'all together? Uh -huh. <laughs> I mean, the nigga with the flip flop can't do shit, but this nigga I'm with. He got boots on, they come all the way over here. That nigga ankle support ain't shit. I can do something. Ten ah! cowboy, then he come out of nowhere. Hey, hard knocks. Yeah, that was the show I was on. That motherfucker just showed me. He got a random ass Tourette syndrome. I ain't never heard of him. He just yell out shit for no reason. What did he yell out Steve Eiserman for? Hey, that's Denver sport. What'd you say? Denver hockey? sport. Oh, oh yeah, it's hockey. Yeah. How long you uh been with him? Cause it seemed like tonight is gonna be over with. That's why. She was like, it was five years since he got in here and got drunk. <laughs> it's a cool ass spot. I like this motherfucker, man. We went over there got pizza. They let us bring it in here. We got like two more coughs, baby girl, and then you're gonna have to take a test. <laughs> yeah, I be nervous nowadays coming to shows and shit. Like, when I don't see security, like, they don't pat you down or take nobody's temperature. I'll be, be looking around like, is a nigga here with a gun and a fever? Like, I'll be in here nervous. You know? I'm not too sure I'm gonna get out of here tonight. Y'all dumb as hell. Fuck Kobe. My dad cool. Yeah, fuck Kobe for sure. Give it up. Give it up. Now make noise for that. Fuck Kobe for sure. Can't be separated from my Canadian brethren for so long. I'm back over here. Yeah, I'm back over. I told my dad I had a show over here. My dad loved Canada. Y'all supposed to clap when I said that. Yeah, my dad is the shit. My dad different though. My dad, he was so scared of COVID, he was on the phone with his mask on. I'm like, nigga, that ain't how you get it. <laughs> <laughs> I can't hear you, I can take this mask down. Cause you don't need it on, ain't it ass? <laughs> I came over his house one day, he made me stop on the porch, like stop right there, put this blindfold on. <laughs> I put the blindfold on, he's like, dip your tongue in there. I was like, what's that? I was like, Rand's dressing? He was like, that's bleach. You oh. sick. So <laugh> You ain't supposed to lick bleach. That ain't what the CDC said. <laughs> he the truth though. My daddy the man. He uh he been divorced so many times now. When he like he's single for life. He ain't trying to get married no more. He's like 76, 76 years old. And I be trying to hook him up because he like young women. So I be trying to hook him up. He's 70. I'm like that go Esther. She's 60. He's like, I don't want that old bitch. <laughs> <laughs> you old motherfucker. What is you talking about? Y'all, you been slavery by two weeks. How you gonna call somebody old, my man? Shit. We was watching like an NBA game and this is when the Harriet Tubman movie was coming out. The trailer for the Harriet Tubman movie came on. My daddy was like, it ain't even happened like that. That's how old my daddy is. I don't know what happened. He scored and he was like, I would have never shit on blue pants. We went to 7 Eleven. It was me, Harriet Tubman, Dan Campbell, and um. 
<laughs> yeah, man, I went, one time I came in, one day he had this little 25 year old chick in there with me. I was mad. Cause I follow him on Instagram, and I'm like, bitch, you only, he ain't even got one. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, he ain't got no followers. In. They was in the crib, I was mad. First of all, you ain't supposed to date nobody you divisible by. <laughs> Her age went to his age too many times. <laughs> But she didn't care because he got a couple dollars and he was going to spend it, so she was in there chilling. They in there taking shots of tequila, throwing it back, having a good ass time, watching the prices is right because it's his house. They in there being no showcases. This bitch don't know how much a washer and dryer is. She's 25. <laughs> they was in there turning up too. But I guess they wasn't turning up enough, so then they start pulling out pills. They start popping pills and shit. So they taking shots and throwing back pills and this bitch fell out, hit the ground. I come running, I'm like, damn, what's going on? He's like, shit, I don't know, she fell out, I don't feel nothing. <laughs> I'm like, hey, well, these pills prescribed for you, that's why you don't feel nothing. Either. I say, Clifton Adams, three to five times a day, nigga, these your blood thinner, she don't need these. <laughs> she on the ground, blood loose as hell, young little mama. <laughs> like, we gotta pull this bitch outside now. She looked like a pre sun pouch on the ground. I'm like, you can't keep her in here. <laughs> oh man, y'all dumb as hell. What y'all do for a living? Guys in plaid shirts? Uh, I would jiggle over. So, how much did you pay for Go. You know what I'm saying? When he said it, he was like, oh, that means like Jerry Curtis and Max. No, no, to the lady. Oh, to the lady. No. How much is some of that Canadian cock? Five a minute. Is that worth it? Is that what the going rate on Canadian Five cock is? It's over here. I ain't been here in a while. She said, no, it's not it. No, I'm so quick, I get out. Oh, you so quick, you in and out? Yeah. I'm sorry to hear that. <laughs> Sounds like a waste of money. <laughs> This motherfucker be punching people. We ain't got no security here. He is security? How the fuck is he here? What if something happened over there? I don't feel safe. Like, what if somebody get their ass beat over here? He's like, all right, I'll handle it later. Then he got flip flops on. Blah, 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 blah. By the time they had, they done ran outside. Are y'all both security? Security too? Oh, okay, he probably standing by the most nefarious looking motherfucker in here. That's why. He's an undercover security guard. He like, oh, we're gonna start this shit. I'm gonna stand here. And I'm gonna whoop his ass with this flip flop the whole time. Pop, pop, nigga, you get your ass up out of here. Y'all stupid. It's kind of late. I wonder how wild well I can get in here. I can't, I go crazy? Yeah. 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 I like porn. <laughs> Do y'all got porn over here? <laughs> I mean, I ain't seen y'all in three years. She might have changed. <laughs> the queen dad had a bunch of shit going on over here, so. Can I, can you, like, I, just, I like porn. My, I'm an appreciator of porn. Like, I like, and I like. I don't know why. I, what kind of porn you like, Jiggle Up? Two lights, <laughs> Okay, that's a lot. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's the thing you're supposed to say. I like homemade porn. Like, a lot of people I know, they like just regular porn with the actors and shit. I don't like the regular actor porn with the credits running at the end. Because personally, I can't relate to that. Like, that porn, the porn that relate to. I can't relate to two people fucking and it's a waterfall in the background. I ain't never been there. I never made no majestic love like that before. Like, you know what I'm saying? Or they be fucking on like a couch and a pillow match the couch and shit like that. Like, the interior decoration is amazing in the porn. <laughs> And, all, and the blinds got all the blinds in them. Like, I ain't never had no sex in my life. I like homemade fucking porn, like with regular people in it. You know what I'm saying? With niggas with flip flops on in my porn. That's why I like it's a Team Rico hoodie just thrown over the, over the chair. I like to watch a porn where, like, they two people fucking on a sleeping bag on the floor. Like, that's what I watch. Yeah, it ain't perfect. It sound ain't good. The camera ain't always off. Cause she don't know the camera in the closet and she being recorded. She don't know. That's not the point that I want. When it's 
That's the shit I love. And then you got like, you really feel like you're there too. You got like a pants leg hanging over your head. Socks, so you in the closet jacking off real quiet. Gigolo. Yeah. yeah, that's the kind of shit I like, man. Like, I watched one uh, porn man, and they was fucking on a bunk bed. I don't know if y'all ever fucked on a bunk bed, but you should try it. I know y'all yeah. wrong now. But, like, especially on the top bunk, bro, that shit like fucking on a cloud. <laughs> it's like making love on a magic carpet. Like, I seen one porn, and they was fucking on the top bunk. And, I mean, bro got, I guess fam got a little excited and shit. He wanted to be, like, aware of his around. He just threw his hand up. Silly fam, snatch that bitch off. <laughs> that shit went from porno to Mortal Kombat. Fatality. Yeah, that shit was wild. And after I nut, I'll be watching like the weird shit. Like I'll be watching like uh the leader scenes and like like after commentary they be doing in porn. Cause they do that shit like in the movie. They had like bloopers and everything. <laughs> and I was watching one that was fucking on the bunk bed. This dude dreadlock got stuck in the fan. That nigga was just spinning. Around. <laughs> he threw up. It was hilarious. <laughs> I don't even watch porn no more for like the sex. I be putting these people lives together like like a forensic scientist, <laughs> like a detective. I be watching the porn. They be fucking. I be like, I don't care about y'all fucking. What's going on in y'all life? I look in the background, I see a hamster cage, I'm like, they got kids. <laughs> so I got kids. <laughs> then, I look, and then I see the refrigerator and I hear the refrigerator making ice, I'm like, okay. Then I see like some cereal up there, I'm like, hey, that will jazz. I'm gonna have a bowl after I'll bust this nut. <laughs> then I see the dust pan in the room, I'm like, these motherfuckers be sweeping, these regular people like me. <laughs> Then I be listening and I hear the TV going off and they be watching ESPN and they be like, Dan Campbell and the Lions lose again. This one I knew I was this one I knew I was listening too hard. I heard the background like I was like, they need a battery and they smoke the tape. Now I'm starting to care about these people. I called the police out everybody in the fight. I want to see you real quick. I need to watch it. You're still talking about porn? <laughs> I like porn, bro. I like porn. You ain't gonna make me feel bad. I like that shit. Like, <laughs> <laughs> these phones now, it went from the laptop nigga to like, I got porn in my hand. Yeah. <laughs> I got porn in one hand and my dick in the other. You know what I'm saying? Like, we live in, a, in an amazing time. Like, and I like porn for this. Like, I like the conversation. Like, I like to hear women's talk. Like, and it would be what they saying to be fucking with the time. You would turn me off. Like, I'd be watching some of the regular porns with the actors in them. They'd be fucking. He'd be like, oh my God, stick your cock in my cunt, shoot your chins on my tits. It's like, man, bitch, that shit ain't sweet. <laughs> that, ain't, that don't do nothing for me, man. I like the homemade porn with the regular people when they say real shit like, I'm not on birth control. Don't come at me. Like, they, say, they say real shit, man. I ain't no another movie after this, bitch. It's a baby shower happening after this, man. <laughs> I got this old man stalking my girlfriend. I don't know what to do, man. Because, I mean, I know how to handle a young dude. Try to beat his ass. But this old man, he's so old, I don't want to beat him up. And then he ain't really did nothing threatening. He'd just be, like, trying to emasculate me as a man around her. Like, he'd be doing shit like, you know, he'd come over there while we sleep and cut the grass late at night and leave. <laughs> <laughs> One time I called him out there fucking with my car. We had went on a date. I'm like, Red Lobster, we come out. I'm like, hey man, what you doing on my car? He's like, you needed some brake pads. <laughs> <laughs> the final straw is when I, we ordered DoorDash and I came out. He's praying over our food. I was like, I ain't gonna <laughs> Fuck all my ports. Take it back. Bring me some food that wasn't prayed on by another dude. <laughs> I don't know what y'all just opened up, but it sounded fresh. <laughs> Drinks make you want more. They're like, <laughs> Coke. Got to have some more. I don't know. They might sell Coke too. Go see. <laughs> I had to watch what I was dating, man. I be dating girls that grew up in the hood. I don't like that though. No, I like them. It's just they don't tell you they live in a fucked up neighborhood. You got to figure it out. 
on the way over there. Like, you know what I'm saying? They'll just tell you off the bed. Like, the only reason I knew this one girl lived in a messed up neighborhood because the names of the streets got weird. Like, I was driving her house, and I passed a street called Uh-Uh. <laughs> and I was like, I should go home, but I'm going to go ahead and get this pussy anyway. You know what I'm saying? I'm already drunk. Okay. Then I seen the police officer get out of the cop car and put the club on it. I was like, that don't look right. <laughs> I'm almost here. So, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I kept driving, and the next street was wow. called. Three dudes got shot over here yesterday, bro. Turn around. <laughs> then I turned the corner out and pulled up to her house. It was a house on fire, like four in the afternoon. Like a real house fire fan. Like, not no place shit. Like, oh, it looks like a little fire. No, bitch. A fucking inferno. <laughs> and nobody in the neighborhood gave a fuck. They didn't call the police. Didn't nobody throw no water at it. It was just like, nobody cared in, at all. Like, I watched a man get out his car and light his cigarette on the house. He got back in the car. <laughs> like, for real. Like, the, the community didn't give a fuck. <laughs> nobody. I called her like, hey, hey, what up, though? I'm outside. She's like, all right, here I come. I'm like, wait, 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 wait. You know it's a house on fire next door to you? She's like, that house always on fire. Here I come. <laughs> I was like, boy, this pussy about to be so good. You know what I'm saying? Oh I can tell she's the type of girl to take the plan B before you get over there. <laughs> so it's already in her system. It don't work. That's why I got two kids. I went in her house. This was like the dirtiest house I ever been in. I ain't gonna lie to you. Our house was dirty. Like, I walked in, she gonna talk about some take your shoes off. I'm like, bitch, most definitely. Cause I'm not getting none of this outside when I leave. Her house was nasty. Her house is so nasty, I don't care how many times you call Candy Man, he not coming. Candy Man, Candy Man, Candy Man. He be like, mm, no thank you, I'm too sticky. And, her mirror, and all her mirrors was dirty. Her, if you look at yourself in the mirror, it looked like surveillance footage. <laughs> That's how team team, Rico. And she had no furniture at all in her house. Like I, I went in her room, she had her bed was on the floor. Only thing wasn't on the floor was the TV that was mounted on the wall. And then that got me to thinking like, okay, so your neck and your priorities messed up. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. She gonna look at me like, you don't look comfortable. I'm like, cause I ain't never watched TV standing up before. That's why my man's <laughs> We ain't got my feet did. Y'all get pedicures on the side of the pond? I mean men, not the women. Of course, women do. Y'all don't do that? Y'all too motherfucking manly for me over here, man. Get y'all rusty ass feet taken care of, man. Don't nobody want to be in the bed with y'all rusty foot asses? I'll ride in moose all day. Team Rico, you go get pedicures, get your feet right. <laughs> I just thought he got some flip flops on. You got to have it. You take them socks off. Had the most beautiful feet of any security guard you ever seen. Before. That's how he stopped fighting. Tell my wait before y'all fight. Look at these bitches. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to fight no more. I just want to. I want to jack off to these on all the fans. <laughs> I went got my feet I went got a pedicure. For I take care of myself. You got to. Women do it. I only think about it, I didn't know you could pick who like do your feet. So I ended up with like a little Asian dude doing man. <laughs> it made me uncomfortable. I wish I I mean I would have rather than been a woman. I'm just gonna be honest with y'all. I just didn't feel right with a man holding my feet in some water. You know what I'm saying? Like it's just something about a man holding your feet and them bitches wet. It's like <laughs> he was trying to do his job. <laughs> he was trying to do his job and make me feel comfortable. She was sitting there doing his thing, making a little general conversation. Then he was like, he seen I was trying, I'm kind of, you know, tensing up, trying not to laugh. He was like, it's okay to laugh. And I was like, bitch, I die before I laugh. <laughs> Put my feet in your hand, dude. You got me fucked up. I stabbed myself with this nail fire. Run that bitch up. You ain't finna go to the back like, we got another one. You know? <laughs> Women take good care of themselves. Like, I don't know what y'all do it over here, but women over in uh, Detroit, two minutes away, they, uh, black women especially, they go do this thing called yoni steaming. I'm not sure if you heard of it. Clap your hands, we got the internet. Have you ever heard of a yoni steaming? If not, okay, cool, y'all gonna find out what it is. Today. So, uh, in y'all, I might come bring the business over here. Fuck comedy, I'm gonna come over here. Bring yoni steaming. You got, yoni is for vagina, though, gigolo. It's not for you. <laughs> I love the 
Vagina. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Vagina, I came out of a vagina. I was hoping. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. I didn't know. Chris Rock. I didn't know. He said, I came out of a vagina. I assumed that you hear. You know what I'm saying? Like, but no, what a Yonke statement is, is like women, uh, they sit over like a, a pot. And it's like hot water and they throw uh, like different minerals and like shit in there. And it's supposed to like rejuvenate the vagina. Like they, they put real like a little fucking thing around it to keep the heat up in there. You know what I'm saying? So basically women bring and smoke pussy to the crib now. And I'm cool with that. That's really what's going on. Like they come over there and they just pull their panties and I'm like, Kuss. And it's like, did you smoke that pussy for me? I'll take a slice of that. Let me get a slice of that bitch. And the steam just get to wrinkle out the lips and everything. It just rejuvenates the pussy. <laughs> It's, it's, quite, it's like a, it's like a, it's like an exorcism for the vagina. That's what it is. It's getting all the ghosts of Dick's past out of your girl. Like I promise, you, I went with my girl. I was like, like, bitch, your pussy spooky as hell. Like, like, I put it to my ear like a seashell. I'm like, that's a security guard in there? <laughs> <laughs> you fuck Team Rico? <laughs> <laughs> oh, y'all ever be out with some racist shit happen? No. Eat it up. Happened to me before. My phone was messing up. You know, I got an iPhone, so I went to the Apple store to get my phone fixed. And I walked in and I handed my phone to this Asian dude. And he was like, I don't even work here. <laughs> I was like, damn, my bad fam, I apologize. But then he fixed my phone. I was like, bitch, shut up then. You know what you're doing. It ain't racist if it's right. Give me my phone back. Squid games. <laughs> Alright, man. They, they, they ain't got no old subtle ass light. They got just a big ass flashlight. <laughs> I thought I was having a seizure for a minute. I was <laughs> and it was going, Ch -ch -ch. nah, man, nah, go pee, hurry up. Gotcha. <laughs> Run. That's a very, that's a good bathroom for shit, for real. I went in there and did it, so give it up for their bathroom. <laughs> like I'm just saying, a lot of bathrooms I'm going to shit in. I went in there and I was like, this is a shitable bathroom. <laughs> it's small. I felt like I was on an airplane, but the motherfucker is very shitable. <laughs> I only put one layer of tissue down. That's how I know. Well, I used like eight of them bitches. Oh, that was square spare. Yeah, man. I learned if you pay, uh, like when you drive, if you put your phone down and pay attention to the road, you see a lot of important stuff, dog. <laughs> like kids and construction work. For real, I was driving the other day. I saw this billboard on the side of the road that said X89 Prison Museum. And it fucked me up because I'm like, a prison museum? A museum for prison shit? So I'm driving and I kept seeing the Exit 89 Prison Museum. Exit 89 Prison Museum. So I was like, I don't know what's in this bitch. I, it just, they got my curiosity. So I kept driving and I finally saw it. It was like, Exit 89, right here, Prison Museum. So I was finna pull off. I'm, I'm pulling off Exit 89 and I was like, mm, no, nah, good try, white people. Y'all almost got it. <laughs> I'm about paying $20 to go to jail, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> no, nigga, do your job and come get me, fam. I'm not here. <laughs> nah, I'm in jail. Like, what you in here for? I paid $20. We fucking you, my boy. <laughs> my cousin in jail currently. He like it in there, though. He been in jail all his life. Like, in and out since he was a kid. He went in there and all that shit. He's been in there since juvenile. He just like it. I don't know why. I mean, some people just get institutionalized. He like it because they got more shit. He's like, they got the same shit in jail we got here, but he ain't got to pay for it. <laughs> like, my cousin in jail, he got a degree in criminal justice, like most of the criminals do. Um, like, he had came home and motherfucking, like, violated parole and shit. Like, he came home, had an associate's degree and everything. And then we had about to throw him a party. This motherfucker violated, ended up going back to jail, everybody crying. Like, who's going to tell everybody? They were so embarrassed. I'm like, I'm gonna tell him he's going back to get his bachelor's. I don't know what y'all are gonna do. <laughs> it, was, it, it was wild as hell. I'm at a show. What you mean when I'm going? <laughs> I hate that I be talking when I text. That's wild as hell, man. Like, I said, I don't know. 
But yeah, he in jail. Like my cousin got an iPhone in jail. That motherfucker got a 14. My, 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 my cousin got he, he, four, he got a 14. And I'm out here free with a motherfucking 10 with a crack on the street. <laughs> I mean, he didn't smell like shit, but he got I that motherfucker in there. You know what I'm saying? I need some coke. Yeah, he keeps with that bitch in there. And then he be in there doing regular shit like FaceTiming me from jail, like calling me, and I'll be having to pick up that shit. He just be like, no, 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 and then he'd be using my Netflix too. I had to ask him, like, who you watching the notebook with in there, nigga? <laughs> <laughs> All right, they gave me the light. I'm about to get out of here. I don't know how much longer I can be in y'all country. <laughs> <laughs> I don't never want to leave, man. I like it over here, man. Jealous. I am, man. I look over here. I realize something, and I be telling people sometimes why y'all kind of be a little off when they come to fucking with us sometimes. They be like, why are we like they don't really fuck with Detroit like that? I be like, cuz, I mean, y'all kind of got a fish pointed at them. 24 hours a day, you know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> I was like, we should point that bitch the other way, you know what I'm saying? It's just like, big black fish, man. What I'm gonna say to get out of here? I talk about porn. Talk about get my ass safe. Or versus pussy. Talk about gigolo. Dan Cam, but I said that my ass came. Better than that guy. Yeah, yeah, I got it together. You good. That's why this girl got it together. Like, Shh. You don't want to get hit with a flip flop. <laughs> you know what made me mad? This is what I thought about sometimes. Black people can't get away with shit, right? In real life. But it made me mad when we can't get away with nothing in the movies. It's like, nigga, somebody wrote this. Like, like he ain't. <laughs> like, this is a fictitious story. A motherfucker wrote this on a program on a computer. We can't get away with nothing. Like, 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 watch this. Child neglect, right? Child neglect. We can't even. Okay, it was a movie called Set It Off where uh, Jada Pickett, uh, Queen Latifah, Vivica Fox, yes. a bunch of the top black actresses was in this movie. It was about four girls who ended up like robbing banks because shit was fucked up in their life. So while robbing banks, they still kept a job to keep they keep they fronts up. Like, all right, we rob banks, get money, but we still need to act like we get money another way. So they was like janitors. They cleaned up like apartment buildings. One of the girls brought their son to the job. You know, they couldn't find no babysitter, so fuck it. I mean, you, I mean, come on here. The kid, he can't read, he a baby. He a baby and shit. Windex look like raspberry shit, so he drunk it. <laughs> little cuz drunk the raspberry, fell out. Child Protective Services, come take the kid. You an unfit mother. We got to take him from you. But in Matilda, they neglected that bitch until she got superpowers. <laughs> <laughs> Danny DeVito didn't give a fuck about Matilda. <laughs> She like, Daddy, I'm hungry. Shut up, bitch. Go to sleep. <laughs> nice chocolate cakes and books flowing through the sky. Home Alone, they left that nigga everywhere. Nobody, <laughs> nobody got Kevin McAllister at all. <laughs> they left him at home, Paris, New York, Bikini Bottom, Narnia, <laughs> Compton, California. This nigga was a rolling 60s crib by the time they got back to this kid. <laughs> he was a neighborhood kid, bro. They fucked with Cully Coconut in real life that they neglected him so much in that movie. <laughs> you seen my Cully Coconut recently? He's like a meth addict. He rich as fuck. <laughs> they don't. They white people get away with that kind of shit. <laughs> Honey, I shrunk the kids. He shrunk the kids in the movie. <laughs> he shrunk the babies, man. First of all, fuck that. They let him buy plutonium to shrink the babies because I'm assuming that's what you use to shrink people. <laughs> He went to the store and said, hey, can I get two plutoniums? And they was like, of course, white man. Of course you can. They ain't asked no question. But here I go, go in the same store buying bacon soda. They send the whole task force out there behind me. What you doing with that? Baking a cake? My nigga, like, what do you mean? This white man just bought some green shit that glow. Are you stopping me? Then he shrink his babies. Now they in the backyard running around from ants and lawnmowers scared. Then they let him keep him for the next movie. <laughs> and he didn't shrink him, he made him bigger. Now he got Tyrannosaurus Rex sized white kids running around the neighborhood. I'm just saying, if that was Tyler Perry's Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, they'd have took them little niggas, man. Yeah. They'd have came and scooped them up like, we got y'all. They'd have walked out with them like this. <laughs> then they'd be like, Medea, where you get all this plutonium from? Hey, that's what they <laughs>
I ain't, I ain't, I mean, I was in a relationship, but I'm not. I was dating a girl, and she went, she wasn't shit. You gotta be better. You gotta date somebody that's trying to get to a level that you at. And I don't mean I'm better. You wanna be better than you was yesterday, and I don't think the woman that I was with at the time wanted that. You know what I'm saying? So now I'm trying to date women that are independent. You know what I'm saying? Like women that got their own shit, they don't really clap. Like women that's strong, they will get them on. That's good. <laughs> Yeah, even motherfuckers, even motherfuckers with the plaid shirts on that beat women agree with that. You know what I'm saying? Like, they got they got domestic violence costumes on right now. Like, what are you following? Oh, I'm a white Peter. Where's my dinner? Why the violent dress? I'm just playing. We laugh at domestic violence. That's how I know we in a good place. Yeah. Any, man yeah, is woman, any man is a woman a bitch. Off top. You need to say yes. Um what I was gonna say, uh, oh, but I, I'm dating more women, independent women, and I love independent women a lot. The only thing I, that bothers me with independent women, though, is that uh, they quick to let you know they don't need your ugly ass when they mad at you. <laughs> so as soon as shit on the, like, some, anything, any little thing she mad about, she ain't fucking with you no more. She on the phone with her homegirl, like, bitch, I don't need him for shit. What is you saying? <laughs> um, I got my own money, I bought my own car, buy my own clothes. I have a master's degree, a bachelor's degree, an associate's degree. I have an LLC now. I've been making candles since the pandemic started. I, 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 I can light like my own way, bitch. I make my own candles. I don't need a man for nothing. Uh, for protection, what? I, got a, I, I have a Draco. I go to the gun range three times a week. I'm surgical with this motherfucking AR-15. I don't need any shit. Until she come upstairs crying with snot running down her nose because she saw a spider downstairs and now she crying. She went upstairs, Josh, I'm scared. It's a spider downstairs. Bitch, you kill it, okay? You kill it. You independent. You didn't need me. Hit it with that master's degree. You were just talking about 20 minutes ago. You didn't need, where that Draco at? There this bitch at. Fuck on here. You don't need me always using that vibrator like it ain't a dick upstairs with a soul. In there, fuck Fucking you pussy up. I come in the house, I think somebody in there cutting hair in the room. You in there beating your pussy up with a jackhammer. Fuck around, get nails posed, and your whole shit sees up on one side. Now I got the little Two Face for the rest of my motherfucking life. Cause you can't put that down, bitch. Just a dick upstairs with a soul. And you fucking this machine. <laughs> and then you ain't gonna stop. I'm looking at you. I'm watching you. All the lights is on. You ain't gonna stop. At least when we get caught, we pretend like we doing some different shit. Me and they're like, damn, baby, you see this bump right here? What you think this is? You just gonna keep it. Beating your pussy up, wondering why your head hurt all the motherfucking time. <laughs> and your pH balance thrown off, cause you fucking a battery, that's why. <laughs> you don't even know what's in a battery. Love, hate, electrons, protons, magnesium, zinc. Every time I shake your hand after that bitch, you shocked me, I almost died. After I wash the dishes fucking with you. You go in the kitchen, the microwave, come on, cause you got superpowers. <laughs> You walk up the street, the alarm's going off. Bitch, it's Magneto. I can't even fuck with you for real. Said, but I went from beating up the pussy to Silicon Valley. Like, what kind of shit is that? This motherfucker said, beat up the pussy. 0001115000. Zero, 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 one, 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 zero, 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 one. Mark Zuckerberg, nigga, or Michael Myers, nigga. Like, what are you talking about? Oh, my daughter. Oh, uh, my daughter uh, come live with me for the summer, man, because uh, she live in Atlanta, so she come stay with me for the summer. And um, she the shit, and I love her to death. And she love Pokemon, which is crazy, so. 
when my daughter with me and I don't feel like dealing with her, I let the internet raise her. So I give her my phone, like, go get the fuck out my phone. You know what I'm saying? Go do your thing. So she get my phone and be looking up Pokemon on my shit. She be on my phone, like, uh, looking up Pokemon, which is crazy. She be like, no, 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 see her. Show me pictures of Pikachu. And, uh, no, 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 no. Show me pictures of Charmander. But her two front teeth came out because she a kid. So her adult teeth coming in. So right now she just ain't got them bitches up. She ain't got no fronts. So she can't really say everything the way correctly the way she's supposed to be saying it. So luckily I was listening while she was talking. So I didn't fuck her life up forever. <laughs> <laughs> and she was on the phone and she was like, no, no, no. Uh, Siri, show me videos of squirters. And I'm like, it's Squirtle. Uh, it's Squirtle. Uh, it's pretty. Cause if my daughter would have seen, if the command would have went through, <sighs> I watch a lot of porn there, phone, I told y'all that. Right? So if the command, Rico, if the command would have went through, bro, my daughter would have saw videos of bitches. Fuck videos. My daughter would have saw compilation videos. <laughs> She watching a documentary on Squirtle. It's just bitches just in there, ha, 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 just squirting all over the place. Just bitches at the board, just ha, 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 just squirting, man. That light game, ha, 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 ha. Waterfall. You know what I'm saying? You know Jigolo, you get it. It's a hazard of the job. You get it, man. <laughs> you beat pussy up, man. You know what I'm saying? Binary code. Ha, 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 ha. Zero, zero, one, 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 one. That'd be Why cool, though, if you could catch a squirt for real like a Pokemon. That'd be fun. <laughs> I be thinking about shit. <laughs> I'll be sitting right here. My poker dad's crawling like, there is a squirter in here. <laughs> I'm like, look at my God. <laughs> Pull out my Ultra Ball, that bitch purple. You know what I'm saying? Just to increase the chances of me catching this, this wonderful creature. <laughs> Take my ball, throw that bitch off here, boom, 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 bounce around, catch her, catch my little squirter. I'm like, you caught the squirter. <laughs> Gotta catch them all, my nigga. <laughs> I got 51 squirters. I don't give a fuck about none of the other Pokemon. <laughs> I walk outside, they're like, oh wow, Pikachu had jumped out. Like, oh, that bitch scared me. Let me get my squirter some experience. <laughs> <laughs> squirter, you squirt. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> Pikachu is confused. <laughs> I guess. Um, <laughs> keep it up with a white man that can't jump in this bitch. <laughs> it sounded more racist than anything. Like, what? Well, basketball. <laughs> like, so what you want to say to me, man? You sure that's all you want to say to me, my boy? I'm just saying. For the Barack Obama. You're getting closer, my man. Say it a little. First of all, I want to ask, you been, do she speak English? Like, it seems like you've been translating everything I'm saying to her. She's like, I'll be saying she's like, what the fuck? Ha 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 Someone's like, am I talking too fast? I don't know, I talk fast. Um, all right, I'm gonna do this. I don't know, I'm gonna do three or five. You can ask me five questions. It ain't gotta be about me, it can be about whatever the fuck. Me, you, Anything, five questions, and then I'm gonna get the fuck out of here on that. I like it, cause y'all fun. So anytime I have fun, I be want to see what be in y'all motherfucking head. So just five questions, it can be about anything. Okay, my brother. Where did you get your shirt? Huh? Where did you get your shirt? The store. Next question. <laughs> Let's not waste these questions. 
Okay, he forgot it. That's cool. Three questions. What? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, I already said homemade, but I'm gonna tell you another. All right. It's still homemade, but it's the one. It's a it's a genre of porn where girls uh suck a dude dick while they're on the phone with their boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, I'm telling you, there's some shit on the internet, boy. She was eating that dick too. You know what I'm saying? And he had work like man, I'm so tired. She was like, oh. Shit, boy. So I mean, if I'm you, go watch that. It was a really good. One. All right, two more questions, and I'm out this bitch, man. Uh, oh, yeah. What up, bro? Uh, worst injury during sex. Worst injury during sex. <laughs> uh, I mean, I have. Okay, I'm a clumsy motherfucker, so I have hit him. We hit me as before and laughed about it, so I might have got concussed. <laughs> I might have been out there like two of them, like walking around shaking my head. Um, I, I, call, I put a hamstring too. I, not I didn't pull it, but I like, you know how you catch a Charlie horse while you fucking that bitch sees up on you and then like, oh, 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 oh. Then you gotta get up and eat a banana, but then you can't eat a banana like a banana because you be gay, so you gotta cut it up in pieces. You don't wanna get up and deep throw the whole banana for potassium. She's like, I don't wanna fuck you, know, I just ate your ass. All right, one more question, man, and I'm out this bitch. One more question. Nah, oh, man, let me see. Uh oh, right here. I got hold on, hold on. I got hold on. Hey, man. Best Dan Campbell impression. <laughs> That wasn't a question. <laughs> All right, man, that's my time. I'm Josh Allen. I don't know if y'all got the internet over here, but if y'all got the internet over here, follow me on social media, man, on Instagram. Um, put your phones out on Instagram at Josh Adams with three Z's. J-O-S-H-A-D-A-M-S-Z-Z-Z. -Z -Z. That's my Instagram, Joshua Adams with three Z's. J-O-S-H-A-D-A-M-S-Z-Z-Z. -Z -Z. Keep supporting live comedy, all these comments y'all see over here. Shout out to everybody for the show. Give it up for Josh Adams one more time. Now that concludes
is our uh, second pro show. We'll be having another one uh, November 25th. I'm pretty sure that's a Friday. Yeah. So if you like what you see here, come back, please. And if you're cheap and you want to come back every Tuesday, we have a free show where the younger comics, some older, get to work on their new material. But thank you very much for coming. Everybody appreciates it. All the comics. Woo! You yeah. Where the flag guy go? Thank God he's gone. Yeah. Make sure you take care of the bar back there. Yeah. And I'm sure I'll see you guys again. Thank you very much. Yeah.